Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Monday, the October third public meeting of the Board of Garrett County Commissioners. I want to welcome everybody uh, here in attendance and online. Full house here. Good to see you today. I'd like to call this meeting to order. If uh, everyone would please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then Pastor Kroll will give the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father God, we give you thanks during this special season, this time when we have some special celebrations in our area, as well as seeing the beautiful colors that you have put in nature. We thank you for that. We thank you for these men willing to serve in this way. We continue to ask your blessing on them, give them wisdom, to make them a blessing to the entire region. And we ask, Father, during this special time as well, that you give special wisdom and guidance to all state and federal authorities in light of Hurricane Ian, Lord, that they would truly be able to be a help to all the people who are in need. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Noel, any additions, corrections, changes to public meeting agenda? No, sir, they're not. Hearing none, we have a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So, we have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion to second agenda approved by mutual consent. Everybody got a copy of the minutes in advance of the meeting. Are there any additions, corrections, or questions about the minutes? Hearing none, we have a motion to approve. Motion to approve the We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion to second. Minutes approved by mutual consent. First item on the agenda, uh, we do have a couple of proclamations today, and then we have some recognitions. Uh, the first uh, proclamation we have is for Economic Development Week, and I see our esteemed staff here uh, today. Uh, I'll just bring you guys right on up to start. And I will uh, give the proclamation. Whereas the Garrett County Division of Business v Development is an active member of the Maryland Economic Development Association, a nonprofit organization established in 1961 whose mission is to enhance the knowledge and skills of its members, encourage partnerships and networking among people committed to bringing jobs and capital to Maryland, and promotes economic development as an investment in Maryland. And whereas MEDA members pr promote the economic well-being of Maryland by working to improve the state's business climate and the professionalism of those in the field of economic development, including other professionals with an interest in the economy of Maryland, and through its regular meetings, special programs and projects, members address diverse <laughs> issues, and whereas the economic growth and stability of the state affects all regions and jurisdictions of Maryland, and Garrett County is an important component of the state's economic success, and we'll highlight those successes by recognizing important projects and visiting local businesses. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, hereby proclaim the week of October the 24th through the 28th, 2022, as Business Development Week in Garrett County, and ask all to join with us to recognize and reaffirm the importance of business and economic development locally and statewide on this third day of October, 2022, signed by Commissioners Heimball, Tichnell, and myself. And uh, this is our economic development staff, and they do a great job, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Kim, would you like to say anything? Just, wow, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> 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 no, um, no we're, we're, we're honored, actually, to be able to work with our businesses and help them grow in Garrett County. So. If you are a business owner or you frequent a business, thank you. <laughs> All right. Connor? Absolutely. I'll echo those sentiments. Uh, Kim said it very well. We have a truly tremendous business community. It is an honor to be here serving them every day. Of course, we can always be of help. That's what we're here for. All right. Thank you guys. so much. <laughs> Are you taking a selfie or are you taking a Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And they'll be back <coughs> on here in a little bit. Uh, the next uh, proclamation we have is for uh, I Can Swim Month. Uh, and this is the 11th anniversary of a, a truly innovative and uh, fantastic program that gets... Uh, 
a lot of accolades every everywhere I go and talk about it, and I'm sure all of you in the room that are affiliated with it uh, get the same kudos. Uh, people are very interested in this program. Uh, it, it does a great job, and uh, we appreciate the partnership with the college and the public school system uh, and everyone else that's involved in this. So the proclamation is for I Can Swim Month, the 11th anniversary. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, every day about 10 people die from drowning. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional injury-related death for children ages 1 to 4. For every child who dies from drowning, another five receive emergency department care for non-fatal submersion injuries. Of these, as many as 20% suffer severe permanent neurological damage, according to the National Safety Council. Swim lessons reduce the risk of drowning by 88%. Whereas I Can Swim program celebrates its 11th anniversary of providing all kindergarten children in Garrett County free water safety instruction and swim lessons. And whereas through a partnership with the Garrett College Community Aquatic and Recreation Complex, Garrett County Board of Education, Board of County Commissioners, and the Garrett College Foundation, the I Can Swim program has successfully served 3,232 Garrett County children since 2011 in life-saving water safety instruction with the inclusion of six additional weeks of first graders as a makeup from COVID-19 closures. And whereas parents, residents, Garrett County Public Schools, Garrett County Commissioners, and local businesses have enthusiastically supported the I Can Swim program through participation, charitable giving, and philanthropic gifts in order to sustain the program for 10 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County do hereby proclaim the month of October 2022 as I Can Swim Month and urge all citizens to celebrate, recognize, participate in, and support this important life-saving program. Signed by Commissioner Seinbaugh, Tichnell, and myself. And I think there's a host of you out there uh, involved in the program. So if you all would come up, please, uh, collectively. Who wants the proclamation? Susie. We'll give you the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I see. She has to get over it. Upside down. Careful, you're not taking it. No, I'm just kidding. Anybody want to say anything? Everybody's well, looking at you, Susie. I, mean, <laughs> I, I would just like to, uh, on behalf of the college, uh, thank all of our partners, the, the commissioners, the, the foundation, public schools, CARC, mm -hmm. all of the people who, as you mentioned, have, have donated to this uh, incredible program, and we're really pleased to be able to host it at the college. Mm -hmm. Thank you all thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda, we do have some business recognitions. Uh, Connor and Kim, bring you guys back up. Okay. Just go with what you got. I'll just turn it over to you guys. It's okay. You need that sound. Well, so I'm super excited to learn that it was Economic Development uh, Week. Uh, this whole week, I think it will be apropos if we did some uh, recognitions of our awesome businesses and local area contributions that uh, our individuals have been a part of. So this week, we have a couple, uh, oh, I'll go stand over here so everyone can hear me. <laughs> All right, am I in the right spot? Yes, sir. Excellent. So we do have a couple of proclamations that we would love to present today. Uh, of course, Economic Development Week. It would be absolutely appropriate, so we're going to do that today. Some of the businesses that we have today, uh, Custom Threads, if we could have Kelly come up here. Come on up here behind the stage, behind our commissioners. Again, we want to congratulate Custom Threads on five years of business in our community. 
uh, for your contributions, not only taking over a business that had been in existence for 20 years, but continuing to contribute. Would you guys like to present the proclamation over here? Do you want to read that? Sure. Uh, so this uh, <clears throat> proclamation, uh, October 3rd, 2022, Board of Garrett County Commissioner's Commendation to Custom Threads LLC on their fifth anniversary. We, the Board of Garrett County Commissioners uh, and the citizens of Garrett County are happy to join together to extend our sincerest congratulations to Custom Threads LLC on its fifth anniversary. Founded in 2017, Custom Threads was purchased and formed by Kelly Vitez to continue a legacy of superior service in apparel design and embroidery that has existed in Garrett County for over 20 years. The dedication of the Vitez family has carried on the tradition of quality that can be found in the very fabric of this community and surrounding region. Congratulations not only on this milestone, but also the exemplary work and professionalism of the past five years. May these years be an inspiration for continued success. Signed by Commissioners Heimbold, Titchener, and myself. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Kelly, would you like to say a few words? That's <laughs> <laughs> putting me on the spot. <laughs> no, we're just here to serve anybody's decorating needs, Christmas, um, spirit wear, we do for the white coat ceremony, um, Mountain Laurel First United, some of our biggest, and we do online stores. Just give us a call. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Alrighty, we do have another business joining us here today. Uh, it is my honor to present this Deep Creek Mountain Utilities for their fifth anniversary. If we could have uh, Steve, I can see you out there if you want to come on up here. Now, Deep Creek Mountain Utilities is a division of Stuck Enterprises, a group of businesses that has been contributing to our community in many ways. Steve, step on up here to the stage and I will hand them this proclamation. <clears throat> All right, so this commendation on October 3rd, 2022 is for Deep Creek Mountain Utilities LLC on their fifth anniversary. We, the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, and the citizens of Garrett County are happy to join together to extend our sincerest congratulations to Deep Creek Mountain Utilities LLC on its fifth anniversary. Founded in 2017, the Stuck family, following a tradition of entrepreneurship and investment in their community, opened this business to serve the energy and heating needs of our community and surrounding region. Congratulations not only on this milestone, but also on the exemplary work and professionalism of the past five years. May these years be an inspiration for continued success. Signed by Commissioners Heimball, Tichnell, and myself. Congratulations. Thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Uh, just briefly, I, uh, I, when Connor asked me to do this, I didn't realize I was going to end up up here. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but really thanks. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Um, we, our family has owned Oakland Oil and Propane for 33 years. Um, we've owned um, the, the Deep Creek Fireplace store now for three years, the, the Grantsville Exxon um, that we bought from, from, George, uh, from George Edwards and for 13 years. And so we're doing now Deep Creek Mountain Chili for five. So we could not do this without uh, unbelievable staff of employees and um, unbelievable customers in this area. So, and a county that supports us. And so, I just want to say thanks to everybody that because uh, this is a this is a total team effort for for us to do the things that we're doing. So, thanks for recognizing us. We, right. we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thanks. Do we have any representatives from Tri-State Gazebo today? All right, unfortunately we don't have them joining us today, but I do want to uh, recognize them. Uh, they are celebrating 25 years of service to the community. Um, Dan and his family have been, it's been a family owned business, again, making great contributions. So we will make sure that they get this proclamation and I will allow uh, Paul here to read it so that they can get the full effect. Sure. So uh, again, commendation on October 3rd, 2022 for Tri-State Gazebo Incorporated on our 25th anniversary. We, the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, and the citizens of Garrett County are happy to join together to extend our sincerest congratulations to Tri-State Gazebo Incorporated on its 25th anniversary. 
Founded in 1997, Tri-State Gazebo Incorporated has remained a family-owned business dedicated to serving the specialty outdoor storage and furnishing needs of our community and surrounding region. Congratulations not only on this milestone, but also on the exemplary work and professionalism of the past 25 years. May these years be an inspiration for continued success, signed by Commissioner Seinbaum, Titchener, and myself. And congratulations Thanks, to Tri-State Gazebo. All right, yeah, I think that's, that's all I've got for you guys today. All right, great job, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, next uh, order of business on the agenda. We do have a uh, bid award. Uh, this is for winter abrasives and road salt. Mr. Knoll, what do you have for us? Yes, sir. This is bid number 22-0915, winter abrasives and road salt. Uh, there was 10 bids received uh, from George's Creek Stone and Gravel, Keystone Lime Company, Fairfax Concrete Products, Allegheny Aggregates, Eastern Salt Company, Maryland Minerals, Cargill, Laurel Aggregates, American Rock Salt, and Belmont Aggregates. Now, depending on the quarry uh, where the materials will be coming from uh, and the hauling cost, uh, the recommendation is to uh, basically approve the bids of all the companies except Eastern Salt Company. And the recommendation is to reject the bid of Eastern Salt Company for salt in the amount of $85 per ton. Um, and that is because of the hauling cost associated with that bid. Uh, so the purchasing department recommends awarding the bids as presented from Georges Creek Stone, Keystone Lime Company, Fairfax Concrete Products, Allegheny Aggregate, Maryland Minerals, Cargill, Laurel Aggregates, American Rock Salt, and Belmont Aggregates. Uh, and it will be up to the individual road garages to determine the best price for the materials based on the uh, quarry and the hauling cost. Any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to accept the recommendation uh, on the bid award number 22-0915 for winter braces and road salt? Make a motion to accept the recommendations. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. We do have uh, one announcement. Um, there will not be a public meeting on October the 18th, which is our next scheduled public meeting. Uh, that is due to... Uh, Commissioner Heimball's involvement in the ARC conference at Rocky Gap that will be taking place uh, throughout the beginning part of that week and I will actually be out of town for work uh, that day as well. So we are going to cancel that meeting. So the next uh, public meeting will be November the 7th. Anybody have anything else? All right, uh, questions or public comment? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so would you like me to... Uh, if you want to come up to the okay. front. First of all, hello. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Karen Soriano. And I represent a nonpartisan group of Garrett County citizens who are seeking to add Maryland television to the exi existing Pittsburgh lineup in order to access Maryland TV news. Um, for the benefit of anyone who is watching is here today or read about it in the local paper, I want to make clear that we're not interested in removing the Pittsburgh stations. Uh, I know that you're well familiar with this issue and the request, commissioners, and thankfully you've agreed to submit the application, and we really appreciate that. Um, that's the application to the FCC. Um, this is simply a request for a modification to the designated market area, or DMA, um, to add Maryland television. Um, this process is not an easy one. Um, it is not as simple as making a switch, as some may think. It's very complicated. Um, it requires the FCC application submission and, if necessary, 
uh, research, answers to questions from, from the FCC, and other related supporting work upon approval. Um, this will inevitably include coordination with cable and satellite carriers. Um, while you did agree to submit the application and pay the application fee, we understand that you have not agreed to do anything further th than that. And while we're, we're willing to assist in any way possible, our, our group, uh, we simply do not have the funds or the clout, <laughs> the legal assistance um, from Mr. Getty and any other resources that you have um, as Garrett County Commissioners to make this happen. Um, what may make this a, an easier task, I'm not sure, is that the FCC agreed in 2015 to allow subscribers in multi-state DMAs such as Garrett County um, greater choices in local broadcast news, sports, public affairs, and emergency information. So this includes Garrett County, Maryland. The FCC acted on a congressional mandate addressing orphan counties such as Garrett by allowing upon request um, the county government to have county added to the Bal Garrett County added to the Baltimore DMA. That's in quotes. So this request may be approved without as much upfront hassle as we may expect. Um, the FCC rule will provide Western Marylanders access to critical information and emergency preparedness, um, news and critical resources. And again, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, um, the Pittsburgh stations would remain. That is, our intent is not to you know, get rid of the Pittsburgh stations. This is a request for an addition, not a deletion. Um, and if you would please commit to bringing this long-standing request to fruition, we would be so much <laughs> appreciated. We would appreciate it very much. Um, nearby Preston County, West Virginia, was able to do this exact same thing. Um, they did have the support of the cable and satellite providers, um, which is a little bit different. Um, but I have every confidence that with your support we can do this too, um, and we're really counting on you. Um, thank you so much for your service to Garrett County. Thank you. Thank you. Can I answer any questions? Or? Did you say Preston County was successful, or Pre Preston County was, is successful, was yes, successful? Yes, in doing this. Um, the difference is that they had um, not just the commissioner's support, but they had the the cable and satellite providers support. So they really did have a lot more resources and, and efforts behind that. So I know it's, it's an arduous task for sure. Um, but what I understand is that the submission or the application has not been submitted yet. Um, and we, we know that that's your intent. Uh, so what we're asking for is resources, funds, um, support, you know, and we'll, we're willing to do whatever we can to help, that's for sure. Well, we've said from the very beginning on this, if we can add, we would certainly support that. Uh, we're all in support of that. I don't think there's any question of that. It's just a matter of mm -hmm. clarifying that. Our attorney is telling us that you can't just add. Um, but we're hoping going through this process, we'll get a definitive answer on that. Okay. Um, from the research I've done, and, and I'm not an attorney, and I don't know as much as Mr. Getty does, I'm sure, about this, but it, you absolutely can add that. And I've, I've read so much about it. I've talked to people um, who are in the know, um, including the FCC, so I know that you can add. And, and if that's the case, I think we will certainly support that. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. All Thank right. you all. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. I, I noticed in the uh, Republican you, article. Can you come up front? Do I have to? If you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> we won't make you. In the you Republican know. article, you said you had thousands of emails that, uh, to your office saying that they didn't want Maryland TV unless they could keep Pittsburgh. Is that absolutely correct, that you had thousands of emails? from I, the public around here on this issue? I said we have received more comment on this issue than any other issue we've dealt with in eight years except fracking, and that we have collectively received 
thousands of emails, phone calls, and conversations with people specific to this, with the vast majority of those people, with everyone saying, to, to uh, Karen's point, if we can do both, no one's opposed to that. Uh, but many people have said, if we can't do both, don't change the market. That seems to be overwhelming consensus. Does that mean in your mind that you should stop the effort to bring Maryland TV here? No, and I think we've proven that we are trying to do that by putting the, the application in. So we're... We've said from the day from day one when this first came out, if we can do both, we will support that and do what we can to do that. We've never wavered on that. Um, so yes, to, to your question directly, we are going further today than we ever have um, based on the request from the group to file the petition and see, you know, try to garner more information and see where that goes. M Mike Getty has spent a tremendous amount of time and effort on this. Uh, we have talked with Congressman Trone in particular at length about this. Uh, we have done a lot of work on this, uh, and I have yet to see anything definitive from anybody officially that we can add Baltimore to our lineup without taking away something else. Doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, you know, you heard the testimony there a little while ago. Uh, Karen's pretty adamant we can do both. I hope that's the case, and, and we will certainly support that. Yes? Yeah. Uh, do you need, I have, you probably have seen it, or, or Mr. Getty has the FCC ruling on Prescott, Prescott County. Yes. Um, and that, that does kind of give you information that indicates the possibility. So I, I remember when that happened. Yeah. Um, I followed that when that was going on. I think there were some differences in what was going on, which you alluded to, but yeah, ha absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So I'm wondering how you're going to get a definitive answer when you have told me, I'm Penny Coleman, uh, that all you're going to do is submit an application and if there's any questions from the FCC, if you need to provide any information back Well, I think, you know, we're following the advice of our attorney. What we don't want to do is spend a tremendous amount of money for nothing. Um, I think we, as I understand it, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, there'll be more information garnered from this petition. Uh, and maybe that information that comes back, I think it's premature to sit here right now and say, we're going to do A, B, or C, um, that once more information is gleaned from this, then we can make a better determination um, of whether it's a good investment to move forward or not. But you told me definitively you were just not going to do it. Well, I think we said from the very beginning, uh, again, I'll reiterate that we've always said if it was a possibility to do to add Maryland channels, we would do that and pursue it. Um, and, and I've never said anything different than that. I think our position is to help out. Our position is that if we have reason to believe that we can get both, that we, we would be willing to invest in yeah. making that happen. But as of now, based on what our attorney is telling us, he's a really smart guy that has done a lot of research on this we're being told we can so I, I don't think i don't think we're saying that we wouldn't spend anything to make that happen if we have reason to believe that it can happen and maybe that's what we'll find out from this application process look we're we're all maryland fans raven fans not steward fans and pirate but we'd love to have maryland tv you know so it's not that we don't want it it's just that it's clear to us that the majority of the people in the county prefer the pittsburgh station so if we can do both everybody would be happy and I think we'd be willing to spend some money to make that happen but first we have to have some reason to think 
that it's possible. So maybe that's what we'll find out through this process. Pat? Yeah, just so I'm clear on this. So you're going to file an application in some time frame soon? So Mr. Getty's working on that as we speak. With the FCC in, yeah. applying for this, for this uh, remedy for our Oregon County status. And that's going to happen. Can you give me a date? Can you give me a time frame? As Mike indicated, uh, he's working on it. I, I don't know what it involves. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know what it involves. So, I mean, we'll get an answer to you. Find out from Mike, and we'll get yeah. an answer of a time frame of when that would be. Thank you. But I, I do know that he's actively working on it now. So. Yes. Okay. You mentioned the Congressman Charles' office has been working on it. What has his office said? Oh, uh, that's been a while back. Um, Basically, they'll support our efforts to help in any way that they can. Uh, they did pass along some contact information for particular individuals that Mr. Getty has, and I know he's followed up with that. Um, but it basically, it's just we're here to help, we're here to support, and if uh, and here's some people that you can contact. They're also looking for some funding. Yeah, and we we did request some funding from them to assist us in this. Uh, which they said they would look into, uh, but like I said, that was a while ago, they said no, yeah. and yeah, it no. and and it has not. <clears throat> so. Frank. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner, for listening to us yet again on this issue. I know it's been going on for a while. Uh, I'm really excited that I'm joined by this group of people here for this Maryland TV initiative. I think we finally have a focus group that will do the hard work, ask the right questions and try to make sure we emphasize, above all else, this is an addition, not a replacement. And uh, I think you have hopefully heard that message and actually today and others responding to it. Uh, I guess where I was coming from was asking, one of the issues raised was funding, and it's been a while since I've followed closely, but the money that counties and municipalities got in the recent stimulus program, the uh, pandemic program, could any of that be available to support legal costs, administrative costs, whatever, if they, those funds are needed to be expended? Could that be a source of funds? I don't think so. I don't know the answer to that. Um, the money left. Those funds changed. At first, you could basically use it for whatever you wanted to use it for, and then the controls got tightened as time went on. I don't know if that would qualify or not. We can look into it. Uh, so I, I don't know how to answer that because I just don't know the answer. Well, I guess my request is, could you look into it and then when time is appropriate, give us a yay, nay, or we're still working it? Or yeah, we, we'll look into it. We don't have funds left. We'll look into yeah. it. Um, you know, to clarify, <laughs> at no point in time, it, just so everybody knows, because I, I, I have a feeling like some this is a little more tense than it should be. Uh, you know, we've always been supportive of this from the very beginning. We have absolutely said if we can add Baltimore or DC, well, Baltimore primarily, to our lineup, we would be supportive of that and that we would take a st appropriate steps to make sure that happens. We've never said, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to follow through with it or anything else. Um, the, we, and we have never wavered from what we said in the beginning however many years ago it's been now that we feel like the vast majority of our residents, if you have to pick one or the other, would prefer to keep Pittsburgh. And we've made it clear we will not seek to change that. Uh, so I think we're, everyone in the room here is on the same page. I really do. We, we want Mar and, and we want Maryland TV. Um, but we have made the commitment to our residents that we won't change Pittsburgh for Maryland, but if we can add it, we will. We've said that from the beginning. We're saying it again today. Um, and, and I'm very confident that if we get, and, and we'll follow up on these, uh, you know, it would be a, a best case scenario for the three of us, and I don't want to speak for anyone else, is to us to learn, yeah, you can do it. This is how you do it, and, and let's go. Well, we would do it tomorrow. Um, yes, ma'am. Does he have that? Do you know? I 
Okay. okay. He has all. He does have the Preston County. Oh, he has all that documentation. Yeah. So he just needs to file a petition and see what the FCC comes back with. I guess what Karen's asking is, uh, most of the people left in the room are part of this Maryland TV initiative. And we have said part of what we want to do is provide available resources, support, information, legwork, whatever. We will do that. Uh, we, we can't write big checks, but we can do some of the, the groundwork and the grunt work. So as you're considering how to go forward, keep us in mind. Sure. Do. And we, I, we appreciate that. Um, That's all right. Interrupting, but yeah, I just I'm a little concerned because with that application, from what I understand, um, there's a lot that has to be provided. Um, I have a list here. I'm not going to go through everything. It's like seven different things, and it and we can help with some of that. There's a lot of it that we can't. We just can't do. Uh, we don't have the knowledge or the capability sure. to have um, or the money. So anyway, I'm I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go here and then over here. You can go with Lindsay, it's fine. Okay. Okay, I just, excuse me, I'm Lindsay Pash from Grantsville. I'd just like to ask a clarification. Two weeks ago, uh, you were talking as uh, saying if we go, um, if we do go Maryland television, we would actually fall into the D.C. and Virginia market and not the Baltimore market. Uh, there's two different DMIs. Which one are we going to, Baltimore or Virginia, D.C.? We would prioritize Baltimore. Well, that's what I was. Yeah. But we don't have that choice. But we, uh, from what we've been told, the they basically tell you what market you would be in. Okay. I just make sure that we're all. And I think I don't know. Uh, I don't live there. I don't know if anybody here lives uh, on the far eastern side of the county. But Frostburg, I believe, is in the D.C. market, not in the Baltimore right. market. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're in Grantsville, yeah. so yeah. You know, we're on, on this side. Yeah. But I was just not sure that we were going to Baltimore rather than D.C., but you quote well, that, and that's, go to, Baltimore to, to, to Virginia. Of that that's what we are led to believe at this point and that's some other because we we have had some people tell us uh that do support maryland television that they don't want dc and virginia right they want baltimore right. okay. um so we're, sure we're all on the same page. yeah okay which i think we agree with yeah yes ma'am is there other corporate uh entities that would be against these efforts is there a corporation? It seems like you were quoted as saying the corporation might not agree to do it. And I'm just like, okay, that sounds like maybe a misquoted paper or there's something that I truly don't understand about the entities that might be involved in this particular effort. Well, we can, uh, I don't know exactly what was quoted in the paper or not quoted in the paper um, or, or what you're referencing, but there is a, chance that you can go through all of this and file a petition and seek to get a designation changed and be denied that there's no guarantee that you go through all the work that it's going to happen um and we've been saying that all along as well that it is an opera there's a chance the fcc or whoever's involved in this and i'm not an expert on this uh but you know, Mr. Getty made it very clear that you could go through all of this legwork and do all of this work, and they may, at the end of the day, say we're not changing anything. Um, so that would be, you know, that would be on them. So it wouldn't be a corporation; it would be the commission. You're saying <clears throat> the FCC itself might. Yeah, and I believe, and Frank, you know more about this than I do. I think the way that it was explained to me in the beginning is that. The, and this was for a market change, not an addition. So there is a, a distinction there. To change the market, you would have to have the approval of the affiliates in both markets that you're trying to change from and change to. And there's no guarantee that would happen either. But in this case, I think we are talking about something a little bit different. Yeah, that's what I was going to point out. The, my understanding, the primary objections here would come from the existing broadcasters. Yes. Because they look at it as a loss of eyeballs. Exactly. No net plus yeah. to them. However, 
I don't think they get to make that call exclusively. I think the FCC determines is that a valid objection. Again, I'm going from yeah. my understanding, but Mike, of course, Marchetti, of course, would have, or if we hire additional counsel, would have a better understanding right. of how that works. Right. But I don't think there's any entity out there saying we don't want additional TV to come to the FCC. Yeah, no, I, and I'll, I will say again, no one that I've talked to, I don't know about you guys, but no one has said, don't get Maryland television. Everyone has said, if we can do both, that's great. A lot of people have said, don't change my Pittsburgh channels to get Maryland, but no one has said, no, don't do this uh, at all. So I don't think any, if we could do both, I don't think anyone would object to that. Good conversation. May I add something else? Absolutely. The tension may have something to do with a lack of choice. I think that particular issue is in the news, up to here, everybody's on edge, it's politically charged, and this just added another little zing right, right into the mix. So if you'll forgive us, me in particular, <laughs> <laughs> That's my word. We can never be angry with you. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, and like I said, I know it's a, uh, it, it's, I don't want to say it's controversial because I don't think it is. Again, unless you would want to pick one over the other, we have received more comment on this issue than everything except fracking, which was just out over the top. Even but, the uh, gun issue, even the way more, preservation? way more. Yeah. We have received a ton of comments on this. And again, I would almost say 100% of those comments said, if you can do both, great. But, you know, so there's not any real backlash to doing it if, if we can indeed do both. Pat? Yeah, I, I think some of the frustration that, that we feel is, you know, talking to, uh, to Sonny, the staffer for Delaney before, our mm -hmm. uh, congressman. This has been being addressed for years and years and years and just somehow. We're stuck in the mud and we can't get to the So we appreciate that you're actually going to move on this, and you know, and then we'll get a uh, we'll get some sort of indication <laughs> whether it's a go or no go. But, but I think yes, part of my frustration is, is you know, as long as I've been here, this has been an issue that folks have talked um, knowledgeably about, and yet there's been no movement on it. Yes, ma'am. I just want to make one more comment. Sure. I think from what I understand, if we don't provide um, a lot of the supporting information that I've read about with the application is immediately denied to add the Maryland television. So my, my concern is that there might be a lot of um, supporting information and research that's needed. It's not simply an application that you submit. You probably know that. Yeah. Right? One, one thing I'm very confident in is that Mike has spent a tremendous amount of time on this. I think he's very familiar with what needs to be done. I don't, I don't think we're going to be denied because of, a, of our attorney dropping the ball on something. I think he's going to be very in tune with what has to be done uh, and we'll make sure that it's done correctly. And I, I appreciate the concern, but I, I'm pretty confident in Mike's abilities. Because he has been so... He's talked to the FCC people. I mean, he's really worked on this for years now. Talk to several FCC attorneys yeah. and to do this all the time. Yes, <coughs> yes sir. Oh, one thing. Back in March, I had a letter to the Republican, and we reviewed how they ended up with, the, with Pittsburgh because of the television antenna. Hmm. Well, since then, we've got satellite, we've got cable, and it's a whole new ball game. And if you look at the Communications Act of 1934, it says the broadcaster to serve the public interest or convenience of the citizens. And of course, they were doing that in Pittsburgh because of the over, over relying on the antenna. That's a new ball game. And my conclusion was that the citizens of Garrett County should decide which of the two markets, Pittsburgh or DC, are best conserved, are best concerned with the, what's called PICON, P-I-C-O-N, and they should decide. And that's my position right now. Just sort of get a little review on the background. Thanks. You do not want to stage this as a binary decision. I mean, you don't 
Well, let's no. say anybody decides it's one or the other, because we already know, quite legitimately, they're not going to trade the Steelers jersey for the Ravens jersey. It's not going to happen. So let's. We're trying, though, Frank. Well, we're we're trying. Get <laughs> well, I would like to say that nothing against Garrett County and but public interest, convenience, and necessity transcends the Steelers and the Ravens. That's right. To you. A lot of Garrett Counties don't want to look at that. <laughs> it's, up, it's up to the, it's the individual citizens. Frank's right. I don't think you want to make it a binary, binary choice because. Yeah. But uh, it seems like. I mean, we could have a referendum, but I can tell you how it would turn out. Do yeah, you want Pittsburgh it seems like or. A lot of people look at it, one of the other sports teams, which I disagree with. Yeah. I think if Preston County figured out how to do it and we can really understand what they did and figure out what's different from us or the same from us, I think we have the resources to do it. It sounds like we now have a clarification of the level of support from the county commissioners. So I think let's full charge ahead. Let's do the hard work and see what we can get. Are there any other questions or comments on any other topics? See it. The only one. Anyone want to talk about fracking? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. well, you could be shot. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. The meeting. So moved. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.